Hello, hello, and welcome to our Thursday evening talk. And I'm Robin Smith from the Healthy Relationship Sisterhood. I'm a trauma trained and certified body centered relationship coach. And I'm here to talk to you tonight about defensiveness in your relationships. We'll be looking at a lot of things. I'm going to pull up my notes, which is we're looking at why we get defensive. We will talk about how do you know you're being defensive? We'll talk about types of defensiveness, why it's a problem, and then how to shift it. So pull up a seat and get out your notebook and let's get started. And those of you who are joining me live, please say hello and welcome to you. And let me know where you're listening from. I always love to know that because it's so cool. We can reach people from all over the world. So welcome from wherever you are. So let's dive into defensiveness in your relationships and why, why do we get defensive? Well, defensiveness is, as I see it, a protective mechanism. It's a way that we're protecting our sense of self, how people see us are also known as your ego, what, how you are perceived by others um, and your personality. So you are protecting that, that view that others have of you. So if you get some kind of negative feedback, negative information about yourself, you're going to try and protect that. And you do that usually by getting defensive. Um, I also think of defensiveness as a way of preventing ourselves from feeling difficult feelings, emotions that, that are uncomfortable. So if we don't want to feel the pain of sadness or anger or loss, then we, or fear, then we might show a more defensive side of ourselves, which is, um, again, so it's like a self-protection. So let me know if you have any questions as I'm going along. And welcome if you're just joining us. So moving on to how do you know when you're getting defensive or what, what does it look like to be defensive? What does it feel like? So, and I'd love to hear from you. So put that in the chat. If you're watching live or watching the recording, you can put hashtag replay and let me know what your thoughts are and how do you know you're being defensive? What are your own signs of defensiveness? Because there's lots of styles of defensiveness. We'll be talking about that in a moment. And you may have your favorite style, the, the way that you do it. So tell me what that is for you and, um, and I'll be naming a few of these and you can see if, that's, um, if these feel true for you. And I'm saying hello to beautiful Kathy. Nice to see you here. Thanks for showing up. And whoever else, I know others have been coming and going. So welcome everyone. Okay, so how do you know? That's the question. How do you know you're being defensive? And put that in the chat or the comment section wherever you're watching. And here's some signs of defensiveness. Your voice is raised. You've got a stronger tone. Yeah, like something, oh yeah, well, da, da, da. You know, so there's kind of a pushing quality to your voice. Um, you may have some hand gestures that are, you know, stronger than your, than your normal kind of gesture. Um, you may sound argumentative. So those are a few uh, that come to mind, the four different ones that come to mind for me. And I'd love to hear what, some are for you. Maybe you close your posture. Maybe you put your hands on your hips. Um, you fold your arms. Maybe you pull back or maybe you go forward, right? So tune into what's true for you about how you show up defensively. <clears throat> Another sign might be you're not really able to listen to the other person because you're, you're interrupting. You are trying to get your, your perspective in. You don't want, really want to hear what they have to say, and you want to make sure they hear what you have to say. So you're, um, you're, you're in rebuttal mode. <clears throat> so let's talk about these different types of defensiveness now. And here's a handful. 
um, making excuses. So maybe like, well, you know, I, I couldn't get there on time because my, my kids started acting up and then my car wouldn't start and da, 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 da. So you may have a, a list of, of, you know, reasons, ex, um, excuses for why you, why you, you know, can do something or were acting the way you were acting. Maybe you're justifying what you said or did. So that's a similar thing, but you might be justifying who you are. Like, well, it's just because I'm, you know, I was tired or because um, sort of like excuses, right? Or explaining they're, they're all similar, but justifying, um, giving, um, what's another word for justification? <laughs> kind of making it uh, valid, like why you did what you did so the other person can understand. Um, another thing you might be doing is blaming the other person. So, well, you, you were late too, or if you wouldn't have said it that way, or, you know, it's, why don't you do it too? You know, if you would do it, I would do it. So it's sort of like a, a pushback. Another thing you might be doing is judging the way the message was delivered. So if somebody says something you don't like, you could say, you know, well, your tone is too strong for me. And, you know, I don't like how you're looking at me right now. Um, and so that's a type of defensiveness. And one more, and, and there's a lot more I could say. I'm trying to keep it brief for you tonight. And this is an, one of the things I go deeper into in my longer course, my Rock Your Relationship Coaching Group for Women. So if you're interested in that, definitely um, get in touch. You can leave that for me in the comments and I'll let you know how to learn more about that coming up this fall. But um, so just we're keeping it short. And one more thing is explaining. So explaining as you give this like laundry list of what went on and, and you know, your whole experience around it instead of, so what's the alternative? And we'll talk about that in a moment, how to shift it. So hold that thought and I'll tell you in a moment. And I'm seeing with some comments and I appreciate that. <clears throat> my chest tightens, my psoas stiffens. And that's, if you don't know what that one, that's a muscle, it's a hip flexor muscle in, in, in your hip. Um, my jaw locks great noticing. I love your self-awareness. And then she says, I close down, become mute, panic a little bit, especially if in public. Really great self-awareness. Thank you for that. And I'm sure other people can relate. Um, and then Kathy says, I feel like I'm getting defensive when I feel judged or angry. Yeah, most people would. <laughs> so I want to say that too, is that, you know, I don't know anyone who doesn't get defensive. It's really kind of an impulsive response that we that we all do because it, as I was saying earlier, it's a self-protection. So it's really normal. So what I'd love for you to do is give yourself some compassion, give yourself a break if you find yourself getting defensive because, um, you know, it's uncomfortable. Something's coming at you and you're trying to protect yourself. And that's that's the natural response to that. So it's, it's really like we have to train ourselves not to be defensive because it is our kind of go-to response. So <clears throat> thanks for your shares. And if anyone's coming in later, you know, please uh, chime in and let me know where you're listening from and let me know if you have any questions as well. And you can put hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. And I'd love to hear from you whenever you get to this video. Um, okay, so let's talk about different types of defensiveness. And then and again, I'm just going to give you a short list right now. So, um, oh, we did that. I'm, I'm sorry. I already covered that. And that was the excuses and the justifying and the blaming and the judging how the message was delivered and the explaining what happened. Um, so let's move on to why it might be a problem to be defensive. You know, if it's so natural, why is it a problem? Well, the problem with defensiveness, as you might have experienced, I imagine you have, if someone's defensive towards you, is that it's not very pleasant to receive defensiveness. So my experience of it is it does feel like a wall is getting put up and I feel shut out. Um, if you want to make a connection with someone and they're getting defensive, there's there's not a lot of ability to connect because they're, it's like they're pushing you away. So put a yes in the comments if that's true for you, you feel that too. Or put for you what your experience is when someone is being defensive towards you. What, what could, because again, there's so many types of defensiveness. So 
um, you may react one way to one type and another to another type. So let me know your experience of when someone's um, being defensive against you. But it, it, it is like a pushback. And so it's that, that's the main thing I notice is that it's very hard to feel close, to feel connected when someone's defending. And, and, and it makes sense, I hope, why. And, and it's also, um, yeah, it's just like not inviting or welcoming. So if you're wanting closeness in a relationship, if you're wanting um, intimacy, if you're wanting some kind of connection, if you're wanting to be understood and heard, usually someone's not able to do that when they're defensive. And usually when they're defending, they're also, they probably have a lot of adrenaline going through the system. And adrenaline's that stress hormone that comes up short notice. And it's, again, it's, it's for protection. It's that fight flight hormone. So they're probably in that fight mode um, or some version of that fight flight, fight or flight when they're in defensiveness. So they're, they're, that hormone affects your brain in such a way that, that it puts you into protection mode and, and that it makes you really focused on survival. And so it's not, you're not really able to make a connection because your brain's not uh, getting, you know, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of um, availability. It's like, it shuts off that connection part of your wiring and your nervous system. And it's focusing on protection. You can't, do both <laughs> at the same time. I hope that makes sense. And please let me know if it doesn't. And um, Rachel, welcome. Good to see you. And she says, it feels like a protective mechanism. Exactly. I feel the same way. And Kathy says, yes, I feel pushed away by defensiveness and I use it to push back. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Great. Great to hear from you all. So coming back to my notes. <clears throat> so these are why defensiveness is a problem for connection, for depth of connection. So let's turn now towards how to make a shift so that you can make a better connection if you want to. You know, sometimes you want to defend, you don't want to connect, you're, you want to shut somebody out, they're not someone you like or know or want to like or get closer to, and that's fine. And there's times when we need to defend ourselves, absolutely. But often we find ourselves defending against the people we love and really desire connection with. And that's when it's a bummer um, because we're in our reaction brain, you know, we're in fight flight and, and we're in our kind of um, our survival brain, also known as the, why am I forgetting us? The, um, the amygdala is, is the part of the brain that's responsible for that. Um, fear kind of governs fear. And you're also, you could say you're in your brain stem. That's a different part of the brain, which is um, fight flight specifically. So it's the reptilian brain. So reptiles, you know, they don't do a lot of connection and warmth and hugging and uh, <laughs> they're all about just eating and surviving. But we humans are more evolved, but we still have that lower brain we still have that reptilian side of our brain. So we can easily go there when we feel unsafe. So that would be another reason you might get defensive. You don't feel safe. <clears throat> okay, so how to shift it. To shift defensiveness, there's many things you can do, but first you wanna notice you're getting defensive. So some of those signs you, some of you mentioned, you know, maybe heart is pounding, maybe your voice got louder, maybe you've got a more intense tone, maybe you're gesturing more, maybe you're, you feel like you're in an argument, but you don't, but you're, you know, you're not meaning to be. Um, so those are some signs. So you want to notice that and, and just take a note for yourself and pause, <sighs> take a breath and give your, give a little gap, give a little space to the communication. So you can, choose to shift out of the pattern. And then other things you can do, and again, I'm keeping this brief for now, and um, we do go deeper into this in my Rock Your Relationship coaching group, which is such a wonderful group and fun experience. So I hope you will consider that as it's coming up soon. Um, other things you can do are instead of talking, which tend, sometimes might look like interrupting, like I was saying, just button your lip and listen, 
practice listening. This person is giving you information about their experience, about their concerns, about something they noticed. They're wanting you to hear them or they wouldn't be telling you. So it's an opportunity to practice really listening and noticing your response. Ooh, I feel, you know, maybe you're noticing your heart pounding, your hands are sweating, your jaw is clenching, whatever you're noticing and let yourself be with that. And, you know, as long as you really do feel safe, you, maybe you need to check, am I safe right now? Is this person threatening me? You know, and if none of those things are happening, if you know you're safe and you're not under a real attack, then you really can take a moment to shift and pause and be okay. And so you can assure yourself, I'm okay. There are many moves that I've taught in my groups of, about how to soothe your nervous system. And I'm just going to give you one right now, but that would be one move to soothe your nervous system would be a really good idea in this moment when you're agitated and worked up. Because again, like I was saying, when you're in your um, reptilian brain, it's pretty hard to like, it's actually pretty hard to listen. It's pretty hard to make a connection. So you can make a, a move with your body and that could look like, let's do a simple one. It could look like a hug. And I like the hand and at the side of the chest, right under the armpit and the other one around the shoulder. So you can try that with me. And if you give yourself a little squeeze, it's like you're getting a hug and it's actually quite soothing for your nervous system. So you could take a moment with that and let yourself breathe. And, and then you might be able to listen better. And then you might be able to respond from a better place instead of that defending, that putting up that wall. So taking a breath and pausing, doing something to soothe your nervous system. You may have another move that you like, that's for a different um, call. And then, and then practice listening, opening your ears, letting your, remembering that they're, they're wanting to communicate something with you. And then another last thing I wanna share that I think is really key to counteract defensiveness is taking responsibility for your part. Really, it's like receiving what you're being told and doing your best to agree to the parts you can agree to, you, you know, with the, something like, hey, I'm hearing you, or you're right, I did that, or gosh, I didn't mean to do that, I'm, I apologize. So whatever it is, to really let them know you heard and you're aware of it and, um, and you, you know, you want to change it if you, if you do, if that's, if that's honest. So those types of things, taking responsibility or ownership for your part of what's happening um, and letting them know you heard them is going to go a long way towards shifting out of the pattern and making a connection. Because if someone's communicating with you, they want to be heard. Um, so let me know how all that sounds. Um, not seeing any more comments, but sometimes they're hiding from me. So, cause I know you're here. So yeah, let me know how that sounds to you. And let me know if you have any questions also. So that's a little bit about defensiveness. And so I wanna repeat that, um, you know, you may have a lot of self judgment about getting defensive and creating arguments and, and defensiveness really can create arguments, especially if both people are doing it. <laughs> Um, so again, be, be gentle and compassionate with yourself. If that's your habit, you probably learned it from somewhere and, or you probably needed to defend yourself a lot when you were little. So if you, if you had a reason to be, uh, to protect yourself, you know, defensiveness is one way you might've done that. And, um, and you may still be doing that and you may still be surrounding yourself with people who you find unsafe or you find are attacking you or judging you. Um, and we tend to repeat patterns from our childhood, right? So if that was something that was happening earlier in your life, it may still be happening. And so you may still find yourself in that similar response of feeling like you have to defend yourself. Um, 
So again, some self-compassion and some willingness to change, you know, and that starts with this awareness of how am I getting defensive? What does that look like on me? What am I doing to contribute to this dynamic right now? So getting curious, I meant it to include that actually. And so that's a really good um, thing to add to what I've shared about how to shift this is taking a breath and getting curious about what this person is trying to communicate and what, what do they want right now? And what are they wanting you to understand? And, and also doing any kind of move you can do for yourself to soothe yourself so you can listen and get yourself out of that fight flight mode. And then taking ownership for your part. Those are a few things. And again, um, if you do choose to study with me more, I will share more. There's a lot more to this, but I wanted to give you something simple that you can implement right away. So I hope you do. And please let me know if this has been helpful and or if you have any questions, I would love to know. And I am seeing, oh yeah, okay, some responses are coming in. So great, what if they keep saying it over and over? You then, great question, thanks for that. Then you keep saying your part over and over. I hear you, I apologize, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do that, and whatever it is um, that you want them to know. You just may need to keep repeating it or you might need to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy saying self hug, listen and take responsibility for your part exclamation point. Thank you, Robin, taking your words into a difficult conversation. Great. I'm glad you can take that and apply it really good. Really, really important and switch from defensiveness to curiosity. That's the question. And yes, that is what you can do if you can do it, but keep your boundaries. Don't get walked on. Of course. Yes. If you feel like you need a boundary, someone's um, a, a, a very offensive or, or um, being attacking, you know, you, you may need to remove yourself. So please take care of yourself. Make sure you feel safe. Um, you may have, so boundaries are different from defensiveness, right? So you can put up a boundary and with something like, you know, how you're talking to me is very hurtful and I, I, I cannot continue this conversation right now. So, you know, you could have a limit like that. Um, and that's a way to get out of defensiveness too, because you're not explaining, you're not defending, you're not pushing back. You're just going, no, <laughs> that's totally legit. I'm glad you brought that up. So let me know if you've got any other questions I'm seeing. Let's see. Yes. Okay. Great questions, everybody. Thanks for that. Um, thanks for being here. Loved, loved seeing you all. And um, I look forward to seeing other comments and questions as the replay is available for a little while here. And please tell a friend if you found this helpful, tell your friends to find us in the Healthy Relationships Sisterhood Facebook group or to find me on Instagram at robin.smith.relationshipcoach. You could send them to my website at conscious thrivingrelationships.com and they can hook up with me that way as well. I'm seeing a heart and a thank you. Let's see. I think I got all your questions. So thank you everyone. Mwah. Much love. And I look forward to seeing you soon.